Hello friends and welcome to my first ever reading vlog. So I've done a lot of reading vlogs in the past but they've been revolving around like a challenge or a readathon. I've never just vlogged my life and the books I'm reading without a purpose an intent behind it. So I have no time period allotted for this. I essentially want to read three books within this reading vlog. I don't know if it's going to be a week. I don't know if it's going to be two weeks. I have no plan. I'm just going to go with it. It is the beginning of July. So this week we have Canada Day festivities. I think I'm going to end up book shopping because a ton of good books have just come out or are about to come out. We are going camping for Liam's birthday this coming weekend. What else are we doing? Liam's doing way more than I'm doing. I'm just That's my shirt. I know. And then um I was just wearing that. I also work, you know, a full-time job. Oh, and I start school. No, that's in August. Liam's out of school, so there's a lot of like configuring all of our plans he's shouting at me i'm also probably going to be in a body of water every day of this vlog so get ready for just me to look a wreck at all times and that's it that's the intro but i guess i'm taking you along everything that i do so today where are we going i don't know grocery shopping starting mm -hmm. camping shopping pickup uh, we're doing that click and collect for the first time ever where I ordered groceries on the internet and you just have to pull in and they'll bring the groceries to me. It's mind blowing really. Oh, before we leave, here's my outfit. I really need to clean my room. So that'll happen today or tomorrow or whenever I'm, you know, in the mood. We just stopped at Value Village and somehow Liam left with a pair of rollerblades. He's never been on them before, but I guess they're just like skates, so he figured it out. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's not as smooth as ice. Ah. Ah. I don't know what these are. We'll find out. There's a flamingo We're and doing... there's a peacock. <gasps> there's, there's a unicorn! And a unicorn with wings. Uh, We're doing our oh, annual uh, camping trip. Burr. Shopping trip. <gasps> Dad wants it. Rodeo. That's for a child. Everyone. No, that guy looks at least fourteen fifty. I want this unicorn. Can I have it? It's forty five dollars. You we do, got you, babe. The nerd. Ooh, reserved parking. And now, look at my fridge. Totally stocked. And didn't even have to step foot in a store. Magic, I'm telling you. All right, I am gonna start reading. Otherwise, this is not a reading vlog. I've basically been doing nothing but filming and editing videos for the last three days. I'm pretty beat. I've essentially been vlogging every single day for the last month. So why not just keep it going and vlog this entire week too. I'm also vlogging every single day for Booktubeathon at the end of the month. So I've lost my mind. I need to put aside some time to read. Tomorrow is a holiday, it's Canada Day. So a three day weekend was very necessary and appreciated right now. I really wanna start Wilder Girls, but I am nervous because I've hyped this up so much in my head. I love Lord of the Flies, I love this cover, I love Rory Power. I love the idea of this queer girls. I love contemporary. I love survival. I love a little sci-fi. This just sounds like my perfect book. And what if it's not? But what if it is? Happy Canada Day. This was a sad day to realize I don't own any red clothes. Besides my red Canada Day sweet legs, which, um, look too hot so it's supposed to be like 33 today which is like 90 for you people so we're heading to our canada day festivities we decided to stay local this year which means we don't have fireworks but i'm not willing to drive and park and do all that stuff 
for fireworks. So our town does like a little Canada Day thing. Think like Stars Hollow Gilmore Girls. Like it's very small town and just cute little things. Apparently there's like a dog show. Okay, the Canada Day festivities are over. And before I get into Wilder Girls, which honestly I've barely started, I can't even talk about it, I need to take a few bookstagram pictures. So first one is the books that I read this month. I'm gonna try not to knock them over. They're just balancing precariously on my bed, but hopefully it'll look cute in a photo. Okay, now I'm watching Haley live and I'm taking pictures of a bajillion bookmarks to sell on the shop. So that's what I'm up to. Oh my god, it's so bright. You can't even see me. I am a hundred pages into Wilder Girls and I'm obsessed. I love it so much, but I have to pause reading because apparently now I'm playing life. I'm the green car. Where am I? Oh, I'm over here. I'm orange, my favorite color. I refuse to leave my bed. So we're just playing in my room. Okay, call it your career. Well. Um, done both. Um, <laughs> didn't like either. Okay, I'm at 120 pages now. And I love it so much. I'm so glad. I was waffling between if I should read this first and then reread Lord of the Flies. Because I really want to reread Lord of the Flies. And I was thinking I should reread that first so I can see like how this is similar and just like compare them. But I decided not to at the last minute. And I'm so glad I did. I know this isn't like a retelling of Lord of the Flies or anything, but I think it would be less shocking to me if I had reread that first. Cause I haven't read it in, you know, 15 years. We're at like a pretty intense point. I don't know what's happening. And I just love all the characters already. And ah, ah, ah. okay. For the first hundred and whatever pages, I also seem to like gloss over the fact that this book is told from multiple perspectives. So suddenly I'm on a new page and it's a new girl and I didn't see it coming and oh my god. Are we just jumping back and forth between these two or is, the, is there going to be three? Is there going to be more than three? Hi, I love this book if you didn't notice. It's getting so late and I should be going to bed but I'm like 80 pages from the end so I'm pushing through. I'm going to be exhausted all week because of this but I'm completely obsessed. So it's a group of girls. There's kind of like three main characters and they were at this all girls school on an island and then a tox happened and they've been quarantined on that island and there's people who on the mainland like send over food like every week or whatever and obviously like a lot of the girls are dying and they're sick but it's like a weird sickness it's like some of them are growing scales. Some of them are growing like a second spine. It's like they're evolving or adapting. It's super weird and I love it so much. I feel connected. I'm in love with all of the characters and it's so ominous and shit's getting real and they're finding stuff out. I have to know like the truth. So I'm staying up late. All right, my first book of July, five stars. Honestly, I don't know that this book will work for everyone, especially the ending, but it was 100% up my alley. I loved it a lot. I was so happy. I liked it. I was so scared that my expectations were too high, but uh, I'm so tired. It's ridiculously late. I look a wreck and I'm going to sleep. Good morning. The plan today was to go to work and then take my new unicorn swimming. But uh, it's pouring rain. Here's 
today's look and I don't know today's book. Did my husband, oh my husband made me a smoothie. I'm off work and I'm headed to the bookstore. I haven't gone in and bought brand new books in a couple months. So I'm gonna go pick out like three things. I'm actually gonna pick up all the books that I talked about in my TBR video that I've already filmed and haven't posted. Part of me is gonna wanna refilm it once I have all the books in my hand. One of them comes out today, that's the new Riley Sagar. And I'm gonna buy that and two other thrillers. And I'm gonna read the first chapter of all of them tonight and then pick one to read. So, exciting! I'm home! So is my small child. Hello. I got a fairly big package from Simon & Schuster Canada. Usually at this time of month, they'll send me those wrapped up, newspaper wrapped books. So maybe there's like four in here, as opposed to the two they usually send. Yay! Here's two, and here's two more. What's really fun about them is they give you a little like tease of what they are. It's such a creative marketing package. It's called The Last Resort. My husband's one. I don't think I've heard of this. The next one. What is my life? It's The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda, which is extremely exciting. However, I literally bought it on the way home. All I know about this is it's set in a vacation town and there's mysterious things happening. And I don't like to read much deeper. Next, I've got annual memorial held for victims of cult slaying. This looks familiar. I've seen this. I've seen people reading this. I think I've seen it in Bookstagram. I've probably seen it in the bookstore. Oh, this is textured too. They don't, they, they don't send arcs, like these are final copies. It's pretty cool. Last one. Oh, this is familiar too. I'll Never Tell. I've definitely seen people reading this. It's by Catherine McKenzie. This is the most like kind of successful mystery pack that they've sent me. Um, three of these I've heard of. One of them was already on my TBR. That's pretty good odds. Hi. It's way later. We're at the point in the night where like, I <laughs> my makeup's off, my hair's up, and my hair's not long enough to all fit in a ponytail, so some of it just sits down here like a mullet, and we all just have to live with it, okay? I read the first chapter of one, two, three different books. To be perfectly frank, none of them captured my attention in the first chapter. So I'm just gonna go with the shortest one, which is the last house guest, and just power on through and hope that it does something. I start liking it basically. This seems to take place in two different timelines, 2017, the summer, and the summer of 2018. And we're from the same narrator both years. In the earlier year, hey, look who blurbed this book. Riley Sagar. Are you guys best friends? Oh, Ruth Ware blurbed this one. Oh, I just had a video idea. Who blurbed you? No one. Oh, this person doesn't need a blurb. <laughs> oh, 20 on the back. Anyway, the first year this girl lost a friend of hers. I think they ruled it as a suicide. And then the latter year, I guess we're finding out the truth. Dun, dun, dun. I'm not very invested yet, but I'm 10 pages in. Good morning. It's Wednesday. I still haven't cleaned my room. I'm wearing my zebra pants this morning. I woke up and the first thing I saw on Instagram was my girl, Cece, rocking her zebra sweet legs. So I had to put mine on. She's my brand ambassador. So these are Mirage. If you want a pair, I'll link them. I don't know. Is that weird? I have recently fallen in love with this lipstick color. It's Impassioned by MAC and I've had it for far too long. I don't even want to tell you how long because then you would know that it's probably expired. <laughs> Hot topic in the beauty community. My hair's not doing what I want, but I'm determined to swim today, so I'm not gonna put too much work into it. The last house guest, I got to 67 pages, and then I fell asleep. Now Robbie's making a smoothie, and it's very loud, but we appreciate him. So, the first 67 pages were a struggle, 
honestly like I wasn't totally digging it and then the first like interesting thing just happened and then I put the book down for some reason but this means I'm more excited to pick it up as soon as I get home another beautiful day at work over sorry you can't hear me over my AC it's very hot and I'm so excited to go swim gonna lie in the grass and read a little bit more so I'm now at page 100 exactly sorry I know how some of you hate when my closet doors are open for some reason here I'll hide it from your vision um honestly I'm bored I still want to continue because like I'm somewhat interested in the mystery of who killed Sadie or if Sadie committed suicide or whatever happened and I'm kind of intrigued because somebody on my TBR video specifically said like you will not like this book which makes me wonder if they think that because they also find found it boring or if there's like one of my most hated tropes in that book or something I'm struggling clearly it's day two of reading this book and I'm only on page 100 like not looking so hot for me it's pouring rain again so couldn't go swimming it's 33 o'clock I haven't checked in with you yet today I am honestly just like done I'm exhausted I wanted the pool to cheer me up and give me some energy but it's cold and wet out which doesn't bode well for how this weekend's gonna go so tomorrow I have to work all day and we're launching new prints which is just like an extra heavy workload day then i have to go pick up my grandma because she has something she's doing my parents are out of town so i need to go drop her off bring her somewhere then i need to go to my parents and take my mom's vehicle because i'm going to use that for camping i fully intended to have a new vehicle by summer but i have commitment issues <laughs> in all aspects of my life houses vehicles everything except you know my relationship so i still have my tiny car and i hate taking my tiny car camping so i'm gonna use my mom's suv then uh pick up my kid then meet ariel because we're gonna do dinner and maybe some book shopping we're gonna hang out tomorrow and then i have to come home and pack for camping so tomorrow is going to be a lot. Today was a lot preparing for tomorrow. And now I'm home and I'm just going to ignore all of those responsibilities. Those are tomorrow problems. And today I'm just going to try to chill and finish my book. And I don't know what else. I was also thinking of like filming and taking books to pictures before we left. Hello? Which seems ridiculous now oh and i'm gonna need to stop and buy some tarps because my tent doesn't come with a fly even though we just bought a bunch of stuff for like a summery sunny beachy camping trip and spent all the money on the floaties and the umbrellas and the blankets and i have a feeling it's gonna be a much colder camping trip so now i need to go invest in the tarps and the warmer sleeping bags and Liam just fell asleep on my bed. We're all very tired today for some reason. I'm gonna go read and relax. Okay, I have to make an executive decision. I am DNFing this. I don't know if I'll pick it back up during this week or if I'll pick it back up ever again, but it's boring. It feels like it was written by a different person. I've read four Megan Miranda's started for Megan Miranda's and I've DNF'd two now and the other two I was like obsessed with so how does that happen maybe I'm just not in the right mood for it maybe I don't need a thriller right now even though I just bought a million thrillers you know what I need to read I've been putting it off for long enough honestly I've been debating if I even want to read this we're gonna we're gonna read call down the hawk or at least the first whatever however many chapters part of me just wants to have this as part of like my collection and not read just the first eight chapters and just wait for the whole book to be out because this is just gonna make me wish I had the whole book in my hands though I have to say 
this is a very smart marketing decision and I think it's the right choice that they didn't put out full arcs. Reading update. Finished Call Down the Hawk. Now I'm debating if I should go to sleep and get a good night's sleep or read some more. So this, I don't want to give it a star rating because it's not a full book, but it's funny how similarly I feel about this as The Raven Cycle, or how similar it is. Not in plot, but in dynamics. Just like two characters focused on in The Raven Cycle, there's a certain reason why they can't be together. There's like side scenes with other characters just like the raven cycle scenes that i don't care about but i read them and they're fine also it's got the adventure element the mysterious element of like not really knowing what's happening and they're on a journey to accomplish something yeah similar vibes i'm definitely missing just like the friendship dynamic so i'm interested to see if we get that from a certain group of friends that is in here or the family because this is a book about the lynch brothers i'm very excited to read this come november 5th i think i'll at least start something i don't really want to bring a hardcover or two camping with me and whatever I start right now is going to come camping with me. So I've been working all day, but I didn't vlog this morning or anything. I just got home from work and I have a package. And this book, finished coffee. I didn't even see who it's from. Penguin. What did I just, oh, it's Bunny. Oh, it's Bunny. I loved 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl. And I know most people absolutely hate that book. This is her new book. So this is about a girl who befriends a group of girls who like call each other the bunnies and they have something called a smut salon and i think at first she like hates them and judges them and then wants to be a part of their group ditching a friend in the process and then it turns out these girls do like weird stuff or they're part of a cult or i'm not totally sure but it sounds interesting. Wish I could take it camping. There's something about hardcovers that I just like don't like to bring. I think it makes sense. That's it. I'm gonna go do that stuff I talked about yesterday and I'll check back in with you probably on my way to dinner. That's the same book. <laughs> How many people do you think are those like you know, holding it up? Trying to like they're like using their phone like oh, on the cheating to figure out what it is. update i'm at the bookstore with ariel <laughs> how dare you hi <laughs> you didn't say you were vlogging i'm trying to be quiet oh sorry yeah me too <laughs> here's my reading update i haven't read anything oh yeah me neither but well, I'm, I'm buying new things i'm currently reading you didn't ask but i'm gonna tell you right <laughs> i'm currently reading as king's new middle grade book that comes out in I think September. Well good, you can lend it to me when yeah. you're done. Yeah, I can, 100%. <laughs> good morning, we're just leaving for camping and everything's all packed. I just have to finally make the decision of what books I'm bringing. I was thinking about bringing an ARC. There's some August releases that I could get a head start on. So I was thinking the arrangement or the turn of the key but i also still have some june arcs that i never got to also it's risky because like what if i only bring one book and i'm not into it and then i have nothing to read okay you know what i'm gonna bring <laughs> random i'm gonna bring verity because everyone tells me i'm gonna love this and i think it could be fun to vlog since you've all been waiting for me to read it so i'm gonna bring three books and hopefully i'm into one or more than one of them We're here, we're camping. It's apparently supposed to thunder shower, so we've made a tent city. I'm 
job well done. Okay, the book was okay. I'll tell you more about it when we get home. Um, but I'm also gonna start this on the drive home because we've had an issue with our vehicles. So we're all driving together. So I won't be driving. So I'm gonna be reading. Okay, we are home from camp. First of all, I know I look bad. Through a chain of events that I don't need to explain, I have no access to like, all the camping gear that we took with us so i don't have my copy of verity here to hold up and review i don't have any towels so i can't shower yet but so my thoughts on verity um i guess first i'll say that it did not satisfy my desire for a thriller which is why I'm now just a little over halfway through The Turn of the Key, which I'm obsessed with. This is definitely satisfying my need for a mystery thriller. So, Verity, it's interesting because I have been consistently told that it's not like any of her books and it's so different and it's dark and it's a thriller. I didn't find it very different from most of her books. Like the the tone is definitely more intense. It has like Taryn Fisher vibes. But it followed the typical Colleen Hoover script. We followed a 20 something young woman falling in love with a guy. There was cheating involved. There's always like an artsy element. One of her main characters is always a musician or a poet or a writer or whatever. This had that. It was darker, but I don't want to give any spoilers. So, um, it was so very predictable, which isn't inherently bad. You know, I read something the other day on Twitter that was like, as a writer, if your big reveal is something that readers can guess, that's actually a good thing because it means you've created a realistic, well-plotted, and understood reveal. Verity is about, I can't even read the synopsis, so let's hope I don't give any too much information. It uh, follows a girl whose name I've already forgotten. And she is an author not someone like you would have heard of necessarily. And she gets invited, hired to co-author or take over for an author who writes this really popular series. And in order to do that, she moves into this woman's house. This woman isn't dead. She just happens to be incapable of continuing her career. Um, so our main character, becomes involved with the author's husband. And uh, we're, it's like the book inside a book. So we're reading Verity and then Verity is the author, the big author, and her book is kind of in, it's discussed in the book, but also her, like, there's another book inside the book. I don't wanna give too many spoilers. Overall, I don't feel very much towards it at all. While I was reading, like it was interesting, it kept my attention, but it didn't do anything that really impressed me, surprised me, you know? But I think if new adult romance and Colleen Hoover, that's something that you read often and that's, or the majority of what you're reading, I think this is a definite good stepping stone to more mystery thrillers. So I'm sure for people who don't read this genre a lot, it did do new things, which is great. And I would love to recommend you a hundred other thrillers who did it better. But I would like to see her do more in the future. So I would read another, I don't know if she's calling this a thriller, but uh, I would read another one of her more intense books. Um, The Turn of the Key though, this is so ominous and I love Ruth Ware's writing. I've always said I love Ruth Ware's writing, but her choices, her reveals, her endings always piss me off or disappoint me or both. So I'm interested to see where this goes, but uh, there's so many books about nannies right now. 
coming out. It's like the new thriller trend. So it follows a girl who becomes a nanny for this family. The family lives in this really like technology heavy house. So like everything is the push of a button, unlocking doors, turning on lights. So lights start to come on when she's there and she didn't turn them on. Music starts to play in the middle of the night. Doors can become unlocked. Weird stuff is happening in this house. She's left alone with these kids. Um, the parents are like super important and they need to travel a lot out of town. And like five nannies in the last year have quit, apparently because there's some supernatural things happening and it's very spooky. We don't know going in if it's actually paranormal or if it's just a realistic thriller. I'm gonna finish this right now because I can't put it down. I read it for two hours in the car. I'm on page 200. I got really car sick reading this, but it was worth it because it's so spooky. I'm 30 pages from the end. I just got to the twist. And it's so fucking good. I can't even take it. Didn't see it coming. One bit. Didn't occur to me. Didn't think about it. Now I'm gonna finish it. What the fuck? Okay. The sun is setting. I still look like this, but I finished the turn of the key and it's five stars. Can you believe it? This is one of my favorite thrillers ever. And looking back, um, I should have, I should have predicted certain things. And I have a feeling some people might but everything about this was perfect. It was slow, creepy house, isolated. It might have been like a little repetitive. I'm just kind of like foreseeing people's <laughs> reviews and what they might say negatively about this, but I have no negative feelings. And honestly, I am just so glad that I, I knew when I read the very first Ruth Ware ever, I was like, I didn't like this, but there's something special here. And I just felt like in the future, Ruth Ware would continue to impress me. And every single time I've read a Ruth Ware, I've always liked the subsequent book better than the one I read before. So in short, highly recommend. Hello, it's the next day. I have horribly burnt my lips so i'm burning them camping but that's not what you care about you care about reading or you care about my life so my life this week i'm working from home uh every week this month you know someone different is taking care of liam whether he's with his grandparents or robbie or me or he's in a camp he has a couple camps like week-long summer camps or day camps like he's not sleeping over it's just you drop him off for the eight hours whatever anyway this week is my week i guess so i'm working from home so i have a lot of work to still do and i also have to deal with the kid who right now is just like playing video games and ignoring me so we are about to head over to his grandparents house to celebrate his birthday with them and i'm getting a little bit of reading in how many books have i read for this vlog wilder girls call down the hawk does that really count verity I tried to read that house book. I might get back into it, I don't know. And The Turn of the Key. So I might as well read five books during this vlog for no reason. This could be a mistake because I just read such a good thriller, but I'm desperately in need of thrillers. Like that's all I wanna read right now. So I am going to pick up the book, or I already started. I've picked up the book that I bought for this vlog, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I am 100 pages in. I'm gonna try to read a little bit more right now before we leave and then maybe later tonight, definitely later tonight, maybe I'll finish it later tonight, I don't know. But this one is basically about a girl who gets a job house sitting. It's at this like really fancy apartment, feels like a hotel kind of situation in New York and the living situation is a little bit spooky. There's some previous history there. People have died or whatever. And now she's gonna be in that apartment for a couple months. And we're getting flash 
for, or I guess we're getting flashbacks. The majority of the story is told in the past, and then we get little glimpses of current day. It's super interesting and engaging, and I love it a lot so far. Also, if I have time, I would like to stop by Chapters yet again for this vlog to pick up Casey West's new book, which came out today. I'm just gonna have to live with the fact that every time I turn on this camera for a clip, I'm gonna look gross. We were just in the pool. It was a great time, but now there's mascara all over my face. But on the way home, I got the new Casey West. And by I, I mean my husband. I made him go into the store and get it for me. I'm pretty sure this is maybe the third YA contemporary romance that I've picked up in the last year that has a main character who works for a florist or like a wedding planner of some sort, and I haven't liked any of them. So part of me is nervous to read this, also nervous to read this because I actually DNF'd the last Casey West that I read, which is weird because Casey West is one of my favorite YA contemporary romance authors. It says one year, where is it? One year, nine chances at love. Oh, here. Nine events, nine chances to fall in love. I don't know, I can't remember if it's like, she runs into the same guy nine times or if it's nine different guys or like what's really happening but i'm not gonna pick this up right now i'm gonna finish my other thriller because i'm much more in the mood for dark twisty thrillers and then i'll probably read this next but it won't be in this vlog because then it'll just never end like i could just do a monthly vlog every month this is probably like an hour long already okay, i definitely haven't finished this book but I am at pretty much the halfway point and I'm liking it a lot. It's slow. It's definitely more mystery than thriller. And there are so many things that I'm very curious about, but I'm getting super tired and I'm gonna finish it tomorrow, I think, and then edit this entire vlog. I realized that I think I've been alone in like every single clip. I promise I spend time with people. <laughs> I've actually hung out with a lot of people in the last week, including like my husband every second of the evening time. He took a picture of me in the pool today with a book that I plan on like recommending for the reading rush. I've been thinking about the reading rush TBR so much. I think I'm gonna film the TBR video tomorrow, but I was thinking about including recommendations as well as my own TBR. And I was really thinking about whatever the heck that Patrick Ness is about the whales. I can't even remember what it's called. And the ocean was our sky. I'm definitely gonna recommend that for a book with a character who's not a human. I can't think of any books that I'm actually gonna read for that challenge, but I have quite a few to recommend. So that video will be my next video after this one. So definitely, I don't know, keep an eye out if you want recommendations. And as far as lock every door, it's going well. It's super interesting finding out like the history of this building but also like the main character can't find out information about the building as much as she wants because one of the rules for living in the building is like you're not allowed to ask people questions like dig into information you're supposed to just like leave everybody alone and not make any friends there's a lot of really weird rules for living there like they're not allowed guests so it's interesting so far that's the the word i would use for it it's not as spooky as I thought it would be. It's more so just interesting, and I hope it gets spookier and more mysterious as we go, but I don't know. Good morning. It's bright and early. Liam and I are working from home today, but I need caffeine, and I forgot to buy coffee pods, so we gotta go. We gotta go, or I can't make it through my day, Liam. That's a foot. I just made a hair appointment for Friday because this is getting rough. <laughs> so hopefully in my next video, uh, or the next video, depending, I'll look a little, you know, better. All right, I'm gonna finish my book. Liam's out playing Lego, and 
I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna read the second half of this now, officially. I don't know what happened. I fell asleep last night. So I started editing this vlog and I had completely forgotten that the first thing I said was I planned to read three books during this vlog. So I was supposed to stop vlogging quite a few days ago, but whatever. I just finished my fifth book and I'm not going to tell you what I'm reading for the rest of the month. Like, let's keep something to myself. In an unexpected turn of events... I gave this five stars. Not unexpected because I thought it would be a low rated book, but unexpected because this is my third five star read in a week. I seem to be on a roll and I'm very glad that I was vlogging the experience because it's such a different uh, tone than probably my last couple of reading vlogs. I feel like last month I barely rated anything five stars, but this month I'm loving everything I'm reading and I really hope it continues. Lock Every Door was so good and this is the best Riley Sagar. Every Riley Sagar has gotten a little bit better and I hope that he stays in this type of tone. I don't want to give any spoilers but this is different in a certain way then Final Girls and The Last Time I Lied or whatever it's called. Or I guess it says here, Urban Paranoia has a deliciously gothic new address. And that's, it's gothic. There's like a twist and then another twist. And I just loved it all. So I don't know if there's anything to tell you besides what I've already told you. It's about um, an apartment sitter but there's also other apartment sitters. There's all these weird rules and mysterious things happening. And this could 100% be a movie. It really reminded me of a certain movie, but I can't tell you what it is because it would spoil the ending. I think I'll talk about it more in my three thriller video for those of you who have no interest in this and you want spoilers. Or just like, go read this. ASAP. It was a really fast read. The Bartholomew, which is the name of the building, in this book felt like its own character. It was just perfectly written and I want more from this author. This is a reading vlog, not like a video with a plan, so I don't really need to do a wrap up, but I just uh, feel obligated to. So I read The Turn of the Key, five stars, an arc sent to me. So grateful for that. Wilder Girls, another arc sent to me five stars, hugely anticipated. Lock Every Door, which I purchased at full price, which $35. So pricey, but I'm glad because it was five stars. Then there's Verity, which is just fine, like a three. And Call Down the Hawk, which I didn't rate because this isn't a full book, it's just a teaser. And that's it. That was my reading week super successful. I had a great time. I don't think I shared as much as like my real life as sometimes I do. Like I didn't share with you like meals or like playing with my child or going on evening walks. Like I didn't bring you in too much. So maybe I will next time. Should I do another reading vlog in the future? Was this too long? Was it too short? Give me all your feedback because I don't know what I'm doing. I'll do whatever you want to watch. Well, not whatever. You know what I mean, I think. I love you as a friend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.